Hello, welcome to this robot kit tutorial for the Elegoo Smart Robot Car Kit 3.0 Plus. Now this is a slightly different version uh, than some of the previous ones. It also did not come, some of them come with like a plastic case. Mine did not have that. This is just a cardboard box, but I was very happy with the kit. I am not in any way affiliated with Elegoo. I bought this myself. I'm not being paid to do this. And I wanted to take a moment to give you a little bit of background before we dive into building this and what I was looking for out of this kit so you have a little bit of context. I am a teacher who teaches robotics and I would like to produce an online series where I can get uh, students interested in programming robots. So I want to be able to teach things like localization. I want to be able to teach things like object avoidance. And I'm looking for a robot kit that is not super expensive. So $150 is kind of my threshold. This is well under that. And I'm looking for the one that I can get that offers the most for the money as far as the sensors and servos and actuators and all that. Uh, but also I'm looking for something that is easy as it can be on the hardware side. I want to concentrate more on the software once we get the robot assembled than I do the hardware. So this is, you know, something that's important to me is to find a kit that it does not create a bar to entry for the student to learn the programming because the assembly of the kit is too difficult. With that context, I do like this kit. Um, and by the way, I do have a link if you're looking for something and, and you like this kit after you see the video, I have a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so just be aware that I get a kickback if you use it. If you don't wanna do that, just go to Amazon and, and search for it. I'm, I'm sure you'll find it. It's like Elegoo uh, Robotic Car Kit 3.0. Things that I really do like is the assembly. I would rate this on a scale of one to 10. I would rate it honestly as like a two or a three. The instructions are actually really well written with a few minor issues I had, uh, very minor. These instructions are very easy to follow. And what I really liked is that they give you these packets like this that are numbered so that you can follow along and the instruction you're on tells you what numbered packet to use. So you know you're getting the right uh, screws and, and bolts and that kind of thing. So. I really did like that. I thought, especially for the price point of this thing, I really thought it was well done. For that price point, you're also getting a lithium battery, which is really nice because uh, anyone who's played with robots can tell you that they go through batteries like water. So you wanna have something rechargeable and it's nice that this guy came pre-equipped with that. I didn't even have to go out and buy my own lithium batteries uh, you know, separately. So that was a big plus. The sensors it has are very good. It does lack a little bit though. I'll talk to that in a moment. It has this ultrasonic sensor, which importantly is on a servo that rotates 180 degrees. And that is huge for object avoidance because now I can do object avoidance pretty effectively with this one sensor because I'm able to change its orientation. Now that's going to require a little bit more math on my side when it comes time to write the software, but I actually like that because again, the goal that I'm trying to achieve here is to improve students' ability to write software for uh, robots and solve those problems. So I actually like that a lot. Robots like this one that I'm also evaluating, the 3Pi Plus, do not come with any ultrasonic sensors and, and they don't really have enough space here where if I wanted to add one with a servo, I'd have to come up with a pretty unique solution. The chassis isn't quite big enough for that. That was a huge minus for that one. The uh, big thing this one doesn't have, which I do know I need, is wheel encoders, um, or at least it would be hard to do without. So that combined with the fact it's a four-wheeled chassis as opposed to a two-wheeled wheeled chassis with a caster for the differential drive is a little bit uh, worrisome for the accuracy for you know if I do find a wheel encoder kit for this so I am going to play with that but what we do have is we have a line following optical sensor array we have the ultrasonic array like I said we have a bluetooth module which is nice because it can connect back to your phone uh, and that's pretty much what we have to get started but what I really do like is that they gave you the shield and they even uh, you know, have connectors on all of the sensors like the ultrasonic and the optical here so that the wires they provided just plug in and you really can't mess it up. There's no soldering, 
there's no hassle. Like I said, this is all basically screws and nuts. A couple of notes that I, I got at the end is that there was some extra parts, so don't be alarmed if you're done. Uh, they nicely gave you one or two extra of all the screw types, even the, the big spacer that goes between the, the two parts. I had an extra one of that. So don't be alarmed if you have extra parts. It also came with like this remote control. Again, I haven't touched these because I haven't done the, the power up and software yet and a cable, which is nice. It had everything you need. It even has this tape to draw the line when you do the, uh, the line following. So uh, I really do like the kit and I hope you enjoy the tutorial and I hope you find it helpful. So I want to do a little bit of an unboxing here and talk just high level about the kit so far. Inside this kit, uh, the first thing to note is that there's an actually useful instruction manual. I was uh, pretty well impressed with the effort put into that. I'm going to put it aside, but we'll be using it for later. And there's four boxes in here with the components. So the first one here has the body parts, the acrylic body parts. There's two of them, the bottom here and the top. The top has this uh, rectangular hole for the servo. We'll come back to those later. I'm just going to set them aside for now. This box has the sensors. This is our ultrasonic distancing sensor. Here we have the Bluetooth module that we're going to use for communication. Here we have the line following the optical sensor array. This is a shield that goes on the Arduino. It's very nice they included that. This is the servo controller and then we have the Arduino itself. Now this is obviously their own Arduino uh, but it is an Uno Revision 3 and that so far looks great I haven't used it yet uh, here is the battery so it's a lithium-ion battery you need to fully charge it before you use it uh, and make sure that it is off for the sake of building this so while it is charging there'll be a green light that's on and once you're done that green light will go off there's various hardware in here so you'll see there's bags of hardware and nicely they're all numbered those numbers actually follow along with what goes on in the manual there are some steps where you will use part of a bag and part of the hardware will be used later. So it's not always consistent in the numbering with the steps, but it is largely consistent and the manual is very good about telling you what to use. Here is our servo with the piece that we're going to mount the ultrasonic sensor on. This is another acrylic piece that we mount that servo motor to the robot body with, some tape for line following, and additional hardware here that we're going to use for the construction. There were some extra pieces left over when I was done, uh, so just be aware of that, and these are the wires that we're going to use to wire everything together. I also want to take a moment to talk about the tools that they provided. Uh, they gave us a small Phillips head screwdriver, a medium uh, kind of hex head here that we're going to use a lot, and a larger Phillips head that's still pretty small. These three tools are important because we're going to be using them throughout the kit. I decided to use these even though I have my own because they are the ones provided with the kit and people following along will likely be using them so I wanted to keep it consistent. I do want to note here though that another good reason to use these over your own is that a lot of the pieces here are pretty delicate and while this is an inexpensive kit and part of that is because it's inexpensive plastics, part of it is because they're small electronic components as well and you don't want to over torque them. So having these tools is actually a safety measure. You don't get enough grip on these to really over torque the connections and I think that's important to note. So if you for example use your own wrench to hold down the nuts while you're torquing you might very well cause damage and I, I kind of recommend against it. The rule of thumb is uh, tighten until everything is tight and doesn't wiggle and is secure and that's kind of good. All right, so let's put those aside and let's look now at what else we have. So here we have our DC motors. There's four of them. I'm going to put those aside. There's a remote control here that you can use for it later, a uh, USB cable for the Arduino, uh, and there's also the wheels here. So there's four wheels. We're going to use those in the very last step to secure those to the robot. Okay, so that finishes up the unboxing. So the very first step here is very simply just to pull off this protective uh, wrapper that they have on the acrylic or plexiglass. That's the main body of the robot. So uh, it's a little fidgety. It's not too bad though. You just kind of have to pull it from different directions and it comes right off. So uh, make sure to get any scraps like I left that little piece there and repeat this for both sides of the acrylic. So I did both of them on this one here and then do the other one as well. Uh, step two now. We're going to go ahead and put the hardware on the motors. Now, to do that, you need the first bag here, and it says four motor on it, and you need a motor. Now, 
what you're going to do is you're going to take the long uh, threaded hardware, the long threaded bolt, and you're going to put them through uh, the DC motor on the side that does not have the wire through to the side that does. Now it's important to move the wire out of the way. We don't want to pinch it. And you're going to take this little metal spacer and you're going to put that down there. And then you're going to apply uh, the nuts on top of that to hold it all together. So you're basically vicing that, that piece of metal there. The reason that's there is you'll see later when we secure the motor to the acrylic, there's two threaded areas, grooves in the side of it. and the threaded bolts that we're going to use are actually going to screw into those threaded areas. So um, now the important thing here is when you're tightening this down, just be cautious. You don't want to over torque it. Now this is a good reason to use the provided tools. If you have your own, that's great. And you might have nicer tools. And, and I did too. I wanted to stick to their tools in this video. So I was using the tools that you might be using at home, but also because like if you have more grip and more torque, uh, you can apply too much torque and these parts are plastic and you know they can easily break so be very careful. The next step now is to take the acrylic piece here and to apply the motors on. Now it's important to get the top you can see here I'm showing the two pieces uh, the one there is not the one we want that's the top because it has a hole for the servo this is the bottom and you're looking for those four holes to signify the front that's actually where the line following unit is going to go later uh, but we want to make sure we have it oriented correctly. Now those sets of holes there are on each of the four quadrants. You can see them pointing to all of them. And those are what you're going to secure that hardware that we just mounted to the side of the DC motor to. So we're going to go ahead and get the hardware we need, which is another threaded bolt and we just have to kind of line it up and put the threaded bolt through the hole from the bottom into that hardware that's mounted to the side of the motor. Again, this is with a medium sized threaded bolt and you can start by hand tightening them. And then again, remember, do not over torque. It's very important to just kind of apply enough torque. You want it secure. You don't want the motor wobbling around on the, on the acrylic board on any way, but you don't want to over torque and break anything. So. Usually the amount of torque you can apply with their tool should be enough. Now we're going to repeat this process for the other four motors. And then at that point, we're ready to move on to the next step. You might want to just kind of make sure all the wires are kind of pointing in towards the center there. That's where we're going to mount the servo controller. Now that is our next step. So step four is to mount the servo controller. So this board here is the servo controller. The heat sink that is sticking up here that is going to be how we're going to know how to orient it. So it's kind of facing the right direction. We want that facing the back. So remember the front of this thing is where those four holes are, where the line sensor is going to mount. And now the servo controller itself is going to be oriented so that that heat sink is in the back. All right, so we're going to now grab the second hardware bag here for the Arduino Uno. Um, note that uh, we are going to use some of the screws now since we're obviously not doing the Arduino Uno for this, but we will need more for later for the Uno. So what we're going to do now is just make sure that we put this on uh, again with heat sink facing towards the rear, noting that those four uh, holes in the front signify the front. And then we first want to put these spacers on. So it's a little fidgety. You got to get the spacers kind of to stay in the right spot and then to drop the threaded bolts in uh, through uh, the hole in the servo controller, through the spacer and through the hole in the acrylic. Um, and then you kind of want to get them all in there. So it's a little fidgety. You just got to play with it. And then once you get them through, we're going to flip it over and we're going to secure all four of these with nuts. Now, I do all four at one time here, completely up to you if you want to do it this way, uh, or if that's too much of a pain to try to keep the threaded bolts in. Uh, I found it to be fine as long as I didn't turn it over too far, as you can see here. Uh, but you could do it one at a time and secure one and then go on to the rest. But there you go. Now, the trick here is as you tighten these, you might have to hold the nut on the other side. So you can see I put my finger on the nut there to kind of hold it. Again, you can hold it with a wrench, but we don't want to over torque. Uh, it is going to be very easy to break. So once that is done, now we're going to just connect up 
the power for all the DC motors. You'll see that there is four connectors on the servo controller and you want to orient them so that the one closest to the motor is the one you're using and make sure that the five volt lead, the red one, is pointing in the right direction. Uh, you can't really mess it up because they were nice enough to give us these great connectors that have a notch in them. So it only really goes in one way. If it's not going in, don't force it. Uh, there's just a little bit of pressure needed to get it to kind of click into place and that's it. So the great thing about this is now all four motors are connected to the right spot. So our next step is to secure the photoelectric sensor array. Uh, that's going to be the line following unit that's going to mount on the bottom. So that's this piece here and that again gets mounted on the front which we know is denoted by these four uh, holes here. And the way it's going to mount is actually with some uh, spacers that are in here. So you're going to see there's these gold spacers. Uh, they're going to be mounted to the line following unit and then those uh, threaded screws that I just held up are going to be used to hold it to the unit. So we put the spacers in here and they're going to go uh, so that the screw head is facing down towards the photoelectric sensor and then we're going to secure that with a knot. Now we're obviously going to repeat this four times. Again you can just finger tighten these. The hex head tool does not actually work uh, to help here. If you wanted to do more than hand tightening you would have to use a wrench again. I don't really recommend it. I mean hand strength varies so you do want it secure so it doesn't fall out but we don't want to break it. Now once those are on they're going to be the distance uh, gap between the actual sensor board and the acrylic so we're going to now uh, hold that up to the bottom like this and then you just need to take the four threaded uh, screws here and bring those through and tighten those down. You can use the hex head tool on these. Again, being careful about how much torque you apply. Alright, so once that's tightened down, uh, just double check that your photoelectric unit is secure. It shouldn't wiggle. Uh, if it does, tighten a little bit more, but you should be okay. Now we're going to do step six and seven here together. Step six is just kind of laying out the pieces. So we have our top piece here. Uh, note that um, we have the bag two here that we used before. Uh, we're going to use the remaining pieces. We have our Arduino Uno itself. We have this shield that's going to be mounted on top of it once we get it in place. And we also have the Bluetooth module that's going to be used to communicate with the devices. Make sure that you orient the top piece up with that servo hole, the rectangle at the top. And notice that there's three holes on the board and four on the Arduino Uno. We are not going to use this fourth hole. Um, that's a very hard one to get to. They put it in a weird spot on the Arduino design. Uh, so it's not commonly used. And make sure it's oriented the right way. The USB port should be to the left while the board is facing up. So we're going to start by putting spacers in between. So we definitely want those plastic spacers in between the board. We're going to put the threaded bolt through. Uh, you know, you have to wiggle it a little bit to get it through the right place. And as we've done before, we're going to secure them with nuts uh, on the other side. Again, I don't hold it completely over here uh, so that the threaded bolts that I put through don't fall out. Um, you might want to do one at a time, completely up to you. So again, make sure not to over tighten these but make sure that your Arduino Uno is secure. Now we're gonna go on to uh, step eight, which is actually putting the shield on. So what we're gonna do here is simply line up the contacts. Uh, notice here that I line them up uh, towards the bottom of the Arduino where the bottom is the side opposite from where the USB port is. You can see in this shot here that the pins go right to the bottom, right to that zero pin. Uh, there are some pins at the top that are not used. Now we're going to put the Bluetooth module in. Uh, this just simply clicks into the properly labeled place that says Bluetooth. And you have to give it a little bit of pressure. Watch out for those uh, solder joints at the top. You know, they'll bother your fingers if you push too hard on them. 
Now our next step is to take the battery here. Note that mine is still charging. Uh, you do want this fully charged before you use it, but if it's still charging, you can leave it charging. What you want to make sure is that it's off. So that switch should be off. We don't want to power anything at this point. So these are the two screw holes that we're going to use to mount it to. And we want to orient it in such a way so that the power cable is off to the right here, but make sure we're holding it bottom up. So make sure that your angle is the same. And we're going to use the bolts from number four here. So make sure to leave those screws. We're going to use those later for the wheels. Uh, what we're looking for are these here. Now there's two of them. Uh, just like before, we're going to put them through. Uh, we're going to attach a nut and tighten it down finger tight using uh, the hex head tool to tighten while holding the screw at the bottom. Once that's in, again, make sure this is off. We don't want to accidentally power anything, and we're going to plug in the connector. Again, this can only go in one way, so make sure not to force it, and make sure that the keyed area of the plastic is facing the right direction so that when you plop it in, uh, it goes in smoothly. All right, now we're going to install the ultrasonic sensor as step 11. So we're going to use the servo here with the mounted plate. Uh, it's a 180 degree servo. And we're going to use the bag of parts that says number five for ultrasonic. We're going to start by taking the smallest screws here. Now this is important because there's a bunch of, of three different types here. We're going to use the very smallest ones. Uh, we're going to be mating them to these hex head uh, nuts here that are black in color. At least mine are. Hopefully the kits remain the same. Now at this point what you want to do first is to take these tiny screws, and they are pretty small. Um, you're going to use their their small Phillips head screwdriver for this, and we're going to thread them carefully through the ultrasonic sensor. Be careful that you don't slip uh, and accidentally damage the sensor or you know, stick the Phillips head screwdriver accidentally into either the microphone or the speaker receiver part, uh, or I should say speaker transmitter part. Uh, so what you want to do is just gently kind of do this. Now, it does need to thread through. These screws do not just fall through here. So what we're going to do is thread them all the way through so that we have the entire length of it sticking out the other side. And obviously repeat this for all four. Once we have all four in, uh, we can now mount it to the acrylic uh, piece that is attached to the servo. So we want to do this on the side with the spacers. So again, these spacers act as a air layer between the actual um, sensor and the back plate. We don't want them to touch. And we're now going to use those little black uh, nuts to secure it. So it's a little tedious. These are very small. Um, I found it a little bit difficult to just kind of manage threading them on without cross threading them. So be very careful if it is offering too much resistance, uh, don't force it. Again, we're only hand tightening these. Uh, just make sure it's secure. It shouldn't be loose. Our next step is now to remove uh, the protective film from our acrylic here because we're going to use this acrylic to mount the servo to the actual uh, body of the robot. Now first step is to take the wire for the servo motor here and feed it through the acrylic. As you do this orientation is very important. Notice mine are to the right those screw heads so as your sensor is facing forward those three holes that will be used to secure this to the robot chassis need to be to the right as the ultrasonic sensor is facing forward. Here we are not doing those, we are doing the ones that secure the servo to the actual acrylic piece. So there's two of these, one at the front and one at the back of the servo. Uh, these will not matter for orientation, it's those other three. So make sure again as, the, as it's facing forward that they are pointing to the right before you secure this piece down. Uh, again, we're doing our same procedure here, hand tightening until we uh, use the screwdriver to tighten. These have the Phillips head and not the hex head, so you're using the screwdriver to tighten these down. These are the medium-sized screws uh, that were bigger than the little ones that we stuck through uh, the actual ultrasonic sensor, but not the biggest ones which we're about to use to secure that unit to the robot chassis itself. So again, this is the top chassis piece. 
Just like before, we're going to pass the wire down through where the servo is going to sit. And we're actually going to pass it back up through that circular hole behind it because we're going to then add that to the shield when we're done. Now, once we have the wire safely through, you can put the servo through. Be careful not to bend or uh, break the wire. And you should have those holes lined up now with the ones in the chassis. We are going to use these three threaded bolts and the nuts uh, that go with them on the bottom. So just like before, we're just going to pass those through start the threading uh, and tighten by hand and then we're going to do any additional tightening that we want with the hex head tool that is provided again being very careful not to over torque as you torque these down uh, you might find it easy for the middle one if you rotate the servo uh, you can move the ultrasonic sensor out of the way so that you can torque down the center one now, once that is secure and it feels tight, we're going to move on to connecting the motor uh, connection for the servo. So if you look on the board on the bottom left of the shield, you'll see that there's a connection there and it's labeled importantly for three, five volt and ground. It is very important that you orient this the right way because you can actually do this incorrectly. Make sure that the brown wire is oriented with the connection that says GND or ground and that the yellow wire is to the one that says three for three volt. The next step is to use this connection here which is actually going to connect the ultrasonic sensor itself to the shield. Now this one uh, you can't actually correct connecting correctly as long as you have the correct wire. Uh, again this is a keyed connection so make sure that it is the wire that has four wires and we're going to plug it into the back of the ultrasonic connector and then into the corresponding spot here on the back of the shield so that's kind of next to the bluetooth module there in the back or towards the back of the robot now it is nice by the way that they gave us these connectors both the shield and having the connector soldered onto the ultrasonic sensor saves us a lot of hassle all right, so now we're going to do the actual spacers that are going to reside between the bottom and top parts of the robot body. So these uh, gold or brass colored uh, pieces here are the spacers and there's six of them. We're going to mount them first to the bottom of the robot body by slipping the threaded screws up through the bottom and then just hand tightening these on for now. And then of course, we're gonna go back and tighten them down with the hex head. Uh, once they are in place. So go ahead and do all six of these. I want to note as we go into the next part, I took a deviation from the manual here. It's the only time I did so. For these steps, for steps 16, 17, and 18, they have the two parts of the robot shown here on top of each other, but they do not have them secured. They don't actually secure them until later in step 19. And as I was trying this myself, I decided that it was problematic. See so here in step 19, you can see they apply uh, the actual threaded bolts. And it was moving around a lot and I was worried it might cause damage, so I decided to take a little bit of a different approach. And I'm grabbing the three wires we need, the two wire power to the servo controller, the six wire one that I just had in my hand that is the data feed to the servo controller, and the, uh, I believe it's a five wire one that goes to the uh, line optical sensors. And we're going to feed them all through at once. So I grabbed the bottom part of the robot here. I'm going to plug in first the power for the servo controller. So again, this is a threaded uh, or a keyed connection. You can't really get that wrong. Now I'm going to take the uh, data control wire for the servo controller. So this one I'm going to again, uh, plug in first here to the controller itself. Again, it's a keyed connection. I can't really get that wrong. So just be careful, make sure it's oriented the right way. And I'm gonna grab both those wires and kind of set them aside uh, for use in a moment. Next now we're going to do the connection that goes from the line following sensor 
Uh, again, this is a key connection. However, you have to be careful on this one. Now there's two ends of this, and if you notice, the five volt wire changes. We need the end with the five volt wire that's all the way to one side, not the second one over. It should be all the way to the left as it is in this picture if you're looking at it top down when it's flipped over. So make sure that you have the right end. So we're going to put this in and it will fit right in there when we've uh, chosen the correct end. And then once we have it in there, we're simply going to feed it through that circular opening there uh, so that we can then add it to those other two wires. So we're gonna group all three of them together and feed those up through the top part of the robot body. So grab all three of the wires now that we've uh, taken and we're going to now thread these up through the top piece together. I found this to be a much more efficient way than trying to do it individually while the top was not secured to the bottom. I was having all kinds of issues where uh, the top was going to fall over and I just didn't think that was safe. So doing it this way now, what we can do is we can safely secure it just with two screws for now. We're doing like part of step 19. We're doing a little jumping around. So I'm going to do the first two screws in step 19 just to make sure that the top is not moving. These don't have to be super tight. This is just intended to make sure that everything sits uh, safely at this moment. Then we're going to secure the wires and we'll come back and finish that up. So back to 16, 17, and 18, part two. We're now going to secure the wires to the shield. So it should look like this. Remember the line tracking module here, very importantly, we wanna make sure the five volt wire is the second one over. So very important that uh, we get that orientation correct. So in that one goes, we then have our other two here. We have the control wires for the servo controller. So they go in the largest uh, clipping piece here so go ahead and clip that in and then finally we have the power for our servo controller so uh, just a 5 volt and a ground so we're going to clip that in and once they're in now we can go back to step 19 and finish up so the other four screws I'm going to attach here and once I get them all threaded in by hand I'm then going to go ahead and tighten them uh, out of habit, I kind of do this in a, in a semi-star fashion, like I would tighten the lug nuts on a wheel, but um, not necessarily uh, required. It's just a habit I've picked up. So once they're all tight, once again, just like everything else, we're going to test, make sure it looks good, but uh, we don't want to over torque them. So for step 20 now, we're going to attach the wheels. We should have four of these uh, long threaded. These are actually screws with a point. Uh, that we're going to use after we get the, the wheels on the servos, well I should say the DC motors uh, themselves. So notice that the wheels have a notch in them. So if you look at the end of the DC motor shaft here, you'll see that it has uh, a non-round shape. It's got two flat edges and that will fit with the wheels. So you're just going to put the wheels on. It can feel a little snug getting them on there. Uh, so apply enough pressure to get them on. Just make sure that they're oriented the way that you want them to be. Uh, once they are in, then you can go ahead and put the screws in. Now, these are kind of self-tapping, so just be cautious that they're straight and level. You don't want to be going in at an angle. Uh, you will be needing to add a bit of pressure when you're uh, turning, You might because if you're just kind of loosely turning, it won't actually go in and dig in. So. Uh, go ahead and, and thread those in and they're just going to keep the wheel there and make sure it, it doesn't leave uh, and, and fall off, you know, even though they're on there pretty tight, really just an extra safety measure. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this process again. We're using the Phillips head screwdriver here uh, for all four wheels. All right, so give your robot a final once over, make sure that nothing is loose, and congratulations, you have successfully assembled your robot.
Well, we've reached the end and I hope that the assembly went well. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment and I'll be doing my best to keep up on the comments. If you have an idea for another robot that you think would fit the bill for what I'm trying to build, please leave that in the comments as well. And I'm going to be checking them and also just looking at new robot kits as they come out in the future. And if you're interested in computer science and robotics and programming in general, please check out my channel and subscribe. Uh, I hope you have a great day.